hi everyone on YouTube. I hope you're having a beautiful day. It's Friday. I hope you're getting ready for the weekend to enjoy yourself, do what you love to do. So today I am um, going to do a share on how far I've gotten with my mushroom, um, Sasha Goboro inspired piece. And I'm going to answer a question on the type of fabrics that I use when I'm doing Sashiko stitching. So first, um, this piece, I did complete the outlining of all of my little appliques that I made and just cut and sew from, um, fabric, from used fabrics. Now the next thing I'm going to do is adorn them with different uh, style stitches. Um, and then I'm going to do a grid. I may even throw some paint on here. So um, I will show you this um, when it is complete on YouTube, but I wanted to share that with you. Now the question stems from this piece, actually, I believe. Someone had seen me placing these pieces on here and noticed that they're thin. These are thin that they're floppy, this is kind of floppy, and um, ask me what type of fabrics that I am using. So now, what I did was years ago, and over the years, I've studied how the experts are doing their sashiko stitching and creating boro. And from that, I have implemented my own method, you might say, my own technique. Basically, back in the 1700s, 1800s, Organic fabrics were used, you know, the cotton, silk, wool, um, all of these um, are what was used, like cotton, cotton jean material was used, linen was used, wool was used, silk was used, and uh, also a special thread, sashiko thread is wound a very different way than our regular um, weighted eight thread. So um, this is a lacy crochet thread. It's synonymous in weight and um, can be used. Now the difference that I have found is, and I do love the Sashiko stitching on organic fibers because it hugs it. It's beautiful. And you even can feel the difference in the tension. Now what I'm doing is I am focusing on, uh, we have so many clothing that goes into the dumps, tons and tons and tons. Because you know in the 60s and 70s, things started to switch over where polyester, uh, acrylics, all of these blends, rayon, these blends were starting to, um, and rayon is part natural, a part uh, natural fiber, but it, they were starting to um, inundate the manufacturing industry, okay? So when we go to the thrift shop, it's pretty easy to find vintage uh, fibers that are blends, and of course today. Now, of these, I use, yes, I use all different fibers. Now, how do I do that? Um, there's a couple there's a couple things experience has taught me tension on the stitching so i know how to play around with the tension i know when to fold it and this and that now if you're making a piece um, such as like on the wall over there that's a wall hanging that's an art piece so to to mix and to mix all the fibers and the fabrics and whatnot is in my mind totally acceptable. Fraying, I love fraying as part of a, a design, a style. So uh, fraying for that piece will occur, that's okay. Now, if you're making a piece, a quilt that's gonna be put on a bed and people are gonna use it extensively and they wanna throw it in the wash, this type of um, assimilation of the, of the fabrics and using these techniques are probably not going to work because what will happen is whether it's cold or hot water and the agitation you may have natural fibers in there that will shrink you may have um, fibers that will run the dyes you have to be careful of that now I would say this the uh, fat quarters and look I got all these at the thrift shop 
if you go on TikTok today, you'll see, or any day, you'll see the clips that I did. I open these up and show you how big these are. You know, some of them are five by three feet. <laughs> huge, absolutely huge. And these are um, from the thrift shop and they're beautiful. These, these are your typical fat quarters. So these, to be on the safe side, if you're using, if you're creating something that you want it to be a little bit stronger, let's say in that way, of being um, functional and practical, then you stay with your fat quarters or stay with what organic fibers you're using and stay consistent. So I um, I have these fibers laid out. This, this is a blend, this is probably polyester. Now, when you're, you can, if you're gonna do like I do and mix Mix them to create um, a Boro inspired piece by using your Sashiko stitching. A couple things you want to consider. If it's super thin and your needle, the eye is really wide and the needle is wide, it will put a hole right in this. So it, it will actually damage your, your fabric. So uh, Sashiko needles are very, very long, they're very, very sharp, but the eyes are. Um, um, the, the, the longer ones will have an eye where size eight, like this thread will fit through it. It might take you a little bit <laughs> to get used to it. You, you can use one of those threaders, but um, that needle is thin. So, and then there's smaller sashiko needles. There's all different sizes. You can get a set of sashiko needles for maybe $10. $10. They're not too bad. Um, so this, <clears throat> This is a blend, yes, I use this fabric, um, this type of fabric. Um, now, with the, let's say you're, you want to, um, you're like, well, you know what? I'm just gonna stay with the cotton jean and be on the safe side and practice with that. So that's wonderful. But when you do, take a test and make sure there's no elastic in these jeans because that will make your stitching so difficult. It will ergonomically just hurt your hand. This one, so what I do is I stretch them. And um, this one has very slight, but it does. It has some elastic in there, but it's very, very slight. So it's probably not gonna make too much of a difference. Some of them like this, this is elastic. I can use this fabric if I want to, if I'm doing small pieces and I just love the design. I'm making a sashiko uh, placemat, let's say. Um, certainly, I've used stretchy the stretchy materials before, but you want to be mindful that when your needle goes through this, it's going to feel like a tug, and um, it you'll notice it. So it's going to give you a, it's going to make you work. So you don't want to use, in my opinion, you don't want to use too much of that. But you can use that. I've used that. Now this, this uh, fabric, this is a, a silk, actually. This is a silk. This is silk woven, woven silk and hand dyed. So that's what that's a piece of. That's, that's what that is. This is going to fray super quickly. I have used this also. You might want to fold the edges if you want fraying, but you want to use a tiny needle on this patch if you're going to use something that delicate. And you know, there are pieces out there, and I would love to do a piece with all delicate fibers. That one behind me, I was going for that, but those are, those are, some of those are silk sarongs, 100% silk. And um, they actually came out a little heavy that is a little heavy. It's lightweight, but it's a little heavier than, than I anticipated. But anyway, uh, so you can, yes, you can use that. This is another example of a very thin, uh, this is rayon actually, and someone was asking specifically about rayon. So uh, again, you may want to use a thinner needle. Um, you know, I have definitely challenged my my work and used the 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 needle that I want to use 
<laughs> but when you go through it, you know, I wonder if you can see this. It's, it's, it just about make, see, it, it makes a hole in it. So you want to use a very thin, small needle. You want to use a tiny needle like that. That's tiny. So um, that's, that's the gist of the rayon. And uh, again, like I said, you know, with washing, if you're making an art piece, just spray the piece or dust the piece or give them instructions that that's what, that's the best way to clean it. And um, definitely not putting it in a front loader, putting it in a washing machine. Maybe, maybe hand wash it, soak it gently. This again is a very light piece. And again, this will, um, this will have a hole in it if um, you can see that very clearly, I'm sure, yeah. So um, now, the other pieces I've used, I have dared to use these. And I've used these when I've made the Buddha. I've, they, someone gifted these to me actually in, in these, but I have other pieces similar to these, but I used specifically this, this one and this one. Uh, in in the Buddha and what I did was I stitched in between here and very gently and very sparingly I didn't put stitch after stitch after stitch I stitched it enough to make sure it was adhering now pieces like this you can also use your tacky glue um, you know there's no set rules unless you're going you're using a, a sewing machine um, then your thread is going to be thinner anyway. So, um, but if you are sashiko stitching, hand stitching, switch to a smaller needle and yes, thinner thread. I would, I would go with the thinner, thinner thread. Um, so this is another, this was a sarong. This is another piece that I've used and I love, I love. I will be making another quilt uh, wall hanging like that this summer. Um, soon. Now this piece is quite thick and this is woven and it's hand woven and um, this is wool um, and you know look the needle goes through this beautifully it goes it goes through it look Okay, and it closes back up. The beautiful thing about wool, and sashiko stitching with wool, wool, if you uh, needle felt wool, for example, with, with your hands, let's say you're needle felting it or wet felting it, you can cut it, you can sew it, you can sashiko stitch it, you can make bags, you know, you can make hats. I've made all those things 20 years ago, and I would make rugs. I loved, loved it. But I also had a lot more room where I could uh, lay the um, wool out to dry. So, um, but you know, now I'm focusing on more of a little bit of a mission using the, um, the recycled fabrics and, um, and just experience. It takes a little experience to figure out what's going to work and what's not. But um, I love working with the organic fabrics, and um, so I find opportunity to, to do that. I do that. So um, I hope that that helps. And if you have any other questions, please keep them coming. I will be, um, like I said, I run little clips, um, you know, every day, probably three, four times a day on TikTok just because it's super duper easy. I love YouTube and uh, I want to make sure my content is uh, specific to what you need. So um, you 